Happy New Year, and it's so good to be with you on this auspicious day. And if you're watching this sermon sometime later in 2023 or beyond, I know that it will still resonate with you. But today, this Sunday, is a special day where we celebrate at least three liturgical occasions. The second Sunday of Christmas, Epiphany, and the beginning of a new calendar year. It's a day packed with symbolic meaning. The word auspicious comes to mind, and I had to look it up to make sure. But auspicious can mean something that is a sign of future success. And I think that certainly applies here. This day points to future success, and maybe it is a sign of some sort. Yet growing up, my mom used to apply the phrase, it's a sign in all kinds of negative ways. I remember once when it was raining and mom insisted it was a sign we teenagers shouldn't drive to the movies. If we didn't get the award in a certain academic category, it was a sign about our future career. Adversity became a kind of sign. And if something were difficult, maybe it was a sign that you shouldn't do it. Once I was grown and on my own, I realized the rain wasn't a sign we shouldn't take the car out. It was just raining and mom didn't want us driving in bad weather. I started to take a more reasonable approach to life, or so I thought. In this new approach, nothing was a sign. Things just happened, mostly randomly. Yet the older I get, the less certain I am that mom was completely wrong. Will you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The three wise people were looking for a sign when they arrived at King Herod's court in Jerusalem. They had been following a sign, a star, that had appeared in the sky. In their world, signs were everywhere, and they were to be taken seriously. The shepherds received angelic visitations and signs of a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The wise men are advised that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, and they travel there to worship the newborn Prince of Peace. Then they are warned in a dream to go home by a different road. In the world of the shepherds and the wise people, natural events, alignments of stars, dreams were all part of understanding God's intentions. God's angel messengers ins instruct Joseph through several different dreams. God had numerous ways to communicate with human beings and paying attention to signs was one of these ways. How far we modern day Protestants have come from this. Many of us were raised with an understanding that if we delved into the mystery of signs, we were moving into dangerous territory. Some of us were taught a very limited way of looking at the Bible as the only source of information about God, all to be taken quite literally. And this is a very understandable point of view because the world is confusing. And we human beings would like some certainty and it makes sense. It takes a lot of wisdom and insight to be able to sit with and in the mystery that is life. The writer of our passage from Ecclesiastes was certainly aware of this mystery. What a beautiful poem the scripture makes. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. The writer does not suggest that he or she knows the why of life, only the what. This is how life happens, this author seems to say. This is what I'm describing. This is how reality occurs to me. 
and the words written over 2,000 years ago still resonate with us. The human experience remains the same. We all go through seasons of life. Each of us at New Year, we often take stock of our life, the birth, the death, the transitions. What has occurred in the last year? We realize we are in a season of life that perhaps the middle age is here, the children have left the house, or adulthood is here and we have purchased a home. Or we were paying our own bills or we are now parents ourselves. We recognize old age is here and we can tell because people are beginning to treat us as if we are fragile. Accepting the season of life we are in is a big step towards enjoying the season we are in and no season lasts forever. The passage tells us God has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, God has put a sense of past and future in our minds, yet we have no idea and cannot know what God has done from beginning to end. I love verse 11. This is chapter three of Ecclesiastes because it encapsulates the human mystery. Yes, we have the sense of the passage of time, yet we have no idea and cannot know the big picture. Life remains a mystery. Having just spent the last week in New Orleans, the concluding lines of the passage from Ecclesiastes really resonate with me. I know there is nothing better to do than eat and drink, to be happy and enjoy ourselves. In other words, laissez les bon temps rouler. If we're not going to figure the whole thing out, we might as well have fun. And I believe there's some wisdom in that too. This past week, Macon and I walked around Audubon Park several times. On one of our walks, we saw a woman riding a three-wheeled vehicle. It wasn't a tricycle in the traditional sense. It had no pedals, yet it moved along by the rider leaning from side to side. It reminded me of Richard Rohr's statement that all our religious experience is based on three things the Bible, the tradition of the church, these being the two back wheels, but most importantly, and this is the front wheel of the three-wheeled vehicle, most importantly, we are guided by experience. And I believe this is true for most of us. Without experience, there is no religion. Experience is the realm where we encounter the spirit in our everyday lives. On the bedside table of my sister-in-law's room in New Orleans is a book. I think it's been there for the past 10 years. The book is called Waking Up, A Guide to Spirituality Without Religion. Perhaps if we follow only tradition and the Bible, we could write a book called Falling Asleep, A Guide to Being Religious Without Being Spiritual. The point is, spirituality is important. It is the part of our religion that is alive. It is God trying to reach us, to be with us, to love us. The wise people followed a star not for its own sake, but because they were seeking something. That something they were seeking was the Christ. And on the second Sunday of Christmas, we continue to celebrate that God came to us in the flesh, in the person of Jesus, to be Emmanuel, God with us. This was love trying to communicate itself with us, trying to reach us in our human drama, breaking into our story with the good news of love and life through Christ. And all our following of signs and dreams these are our attempts to take in this communication, to understand this love that God is trying to communicate. Just think about that, knowing that God is always, always trying to communicate with us. Richard Rohr suggests that this is a Christ-soaked world, that signs of God's love and life are everywhere in nature and human endeavors and art. Yes, even in the stars and in our dreams, if we are willing to pay attention. 
how would your understanding of life change if you thought of the world this way? If you considered that God was always trying to reach us, to communicate with us. We are entering epiphany season in these next few weeks, and this is a time to look for signs of God's love, to open ourselves to possible ways that God is still speaking. Now, those of you in the service today will receive a card during the passing of the basket. A new tradition has developed in the Presbyterian and UCC churches to receive a star word on Epiphany, to see that word as a possible sign of something for your life this year. And maybe you'll get a word you don't like, or it makes no sense to you. And if so, feel free to drop it in the trash on your way out or pick a different word. But maybe, just maybe consider that there is something in there, some meaning for you. It's not after all, about the word you choose or draw from the tray, just like a labyrinth walk that we've been doing in the church in Advent is not about the labyrinth itself. It's about the process that we go through when we walk the labyrinth. It's about the opening up of ourselves in prayer to God. All signs point to something, all of these so-called signs are just possible ways that God might open up a thought in your mind, a passage that you might receive something from our still speaking God, a light that might give you a new insight. That is an epiphany and that is good news. And as we celebrate communion today, we celebrate that our God is always reaching towards us wanting to be present with us in 2023 and beyond. So let me wish you once again, a Merry Christmas season, a Happy New Year today. And may God's love shine in you through this epiphany season.